song. Who doesn't love this I song? I love this song. Are we live yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a great way to start. Yes. What a fantastic way to start. I love this song. And okay. I'm not working tonight, but that's okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Welcome here. This is the Get Your Geek On. You never sounded better, Dave. Mm. Can you tell it's been a little while? I can tell. This is the Get Your Geek On pre show, and the three of us are in the studio again. Hey, it's about like, time. Literally the first time in about a month Almost. that we've been all been together. So the boys are back, the band is back together, whatever you want to call it. We are here, Facebook. Just to get back home. I'm a cow. <laughs> and how appropriate that we should play Bon Jovi tonight, since Bon Jovi is, in fact, playing in San Antonio tonight. Speaking Dead of tonight, alive. this is my brother in law's birthday tonight. No kidding. Today, yeah. All Matthew, right. Ma- my brother in law, Matthew. Oh, I thought birthday, you were going to say your brother in law, William. No, Matthew. You know, William Shatner. Well, no. It's his birthday. It's he's his also birthday. Canadian. Today's his birthday, though. so that's cool. Well, he's Canadian, so his birthday is worth less. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's like 1.3 birthdays yeah. to the one. So, so happy birthday, Matthew. So he's 1.3 birthdays older if you do the, the currency conversion there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, goodness. We're going to have a little fun tonight. We're going to have giveaways galore, guys. Up the wazoo. want to give a special shout-out to Kaylee Cheyenne of The Daily Geek for helping to provide us with giveaways I think almost every week for the next couple of months. Thank you, Miss Kaylee. We're going to have giveaways galore. So we invite you all to come by every week to see what you could win. Last week was a Warhammer 40K giveaway. We also had a Pacific Rim giveaway for locals, for San Antonians, because we love some San Antonio. Oh, I got a story about it. I was going to tell you about Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, let's hear uh, it. Because um, one of my members, who actually was one of the, one of the winners there, Nick Sanchez. Yep. He was, yeah. used to be my uh, my the former XO of, of, uh, Star, of uh, Star Wars Society. He took his son, and not knowing what was going on, because he they loved kaiju movies. Uh-huh. Oh, And wow. so he had no idea he, why he was there. There's a lot of people, and yet that they got to go into the movie. So. Nice. Well, it's kind of funny we mentioned that because... Um, People were asking me, how early should I show up? And I remember that I showed up to Jumanji only 20 minutes early, and I had to wait in the overflow, and I didn't get in to see it. There uh. were like maybe six to ten people, including uh, myself and my wife, yeah. couldn't get in. So I recommended 30 to 45 minutes. Gilbert Ortega, who helped set this up, yeah, he had like 100 people waiting outside, and we got there like 30 minutes early. Wow. <laughs> well, the same thing with, with last week at Tomb Raider, because me and Jenny, Jenny Lee Cosplay, yeah. uh, there was a huge line, but, you know, it was like, I wasn't sure if we were going to get in, but, you know, the, they remembered Jenny, because she yeah. was in, in costume. Well, and, and here's the thing, is that he he told me once that for Power Rangers, he had to turn away 400 people. Wow. Oh, 400 people. Holy cow. So, what we're going to do, the next time we do that giveaway for local San Antonians is we'll go out to dinner beforehand, like an hour and a half or two hours beforehand. We'll go out to dinner as a group, and then we'll go all go over to the theater together so we can try to get in. I mean, good gracious. He said some people who were camped out to see Pacific Rim at noon. I haven't seen that since San Diego Comic-Con. What? To see Pacific, Pacific Rim. Oh, a free screening of Pacific yeah, Rim. Yeah, but so still they were there free. at noon. But see, it was free, though. Oh, man, good gracious. I let you odds that if you know, it was first come, first serve seating at Bon Jovi tonight at the AT&T Center, there'd be people lined up since Sunday. Yeah, in the next county, they'd be exactly. lining up. I mean, gracious. Ooh. I, I was surprised, though, for Pacific Rim that there was that much of a, of a demand. But Well, apparently John Boyega is a draw now. Uh, and he acted a lot better in this than he did in The Force Awakens. I think a lot of people like it. Doesn't take that. much, my friend. <laughs> Doesn't take much. Very true, very true. So, uh, let's see. So, why don't y'all say hi to the people for a little bit while I join the share train and start hey. sharing this thing around? How's it going, everyone out there, you know, in Facebook land? Get to see y'all here. Uh, and the funny thing about this is you can tell I actually kind of got a little, you know, spiffed up today. You can't really see it. Maybe we can get a picture and put it up later. I'm in a tie, but it's my infamous Batman silk tie. And the cool thing about it, it's the classic animated series. So you got Batman, Robin, Two Face, Poison Ivy, Catwoman, Penguin, Joker, Mister Freeze, Riddler, and Mad Hatter. And the funny thing, because I wear this at work, and yes, <laughs> this is actually older than a lot of my students. <laughs> well, and and if you had subscribed to Get Your Geek On uh, dot org 
subscribe to our news alerts, you would have gotten an alert that we went live at 6 o'clock. Oh, we had something special scheduled there? I did. I just went ahead and scheduled it. Very With cool. a link to the Facebook page. So those of you joining us through that, great. If you have not subscribed, go to Facebook or go to getyourgeekon.org and subscribe today. So what? So Peter, how was Tomb Raider, by the way? It was fantastic. It was so. a great, you know, origin story. It wasn't like the Angelina Jolie movie, uh -huh. but this really, you know, added a lot more uh, depth to uh, to Laura Croft because the not 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 to slam the Angelina Jolie version, but it was more of a, that was like you know, kind of like a classic video game type of thing. This one, uh, Laura, you know, you actually found out a little bit more about her. You got to know and actually care about her. You found out what she what she what her her backstory was. A little bit more in depth, and um, at the same time, Alicia Vandeker, I believe that's her last name. I, thought, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sounds right. Yeah, sounds right. Um, she she really pulled this off. I mean, she was doing. You could tell she did a lot of her own stunts. She did a lot of her own. Um, she got herself in incredible shape. And at the same time, the the sequence. Of, if you haven't seen the movie yet. It's the, the one that I had to like near, near, nearly, you know, ha nearly had a heart attack on was when she's on the waterfall and, you know, she's her hands are tied. Was she chasing waterfalls? Because you, you was, don't go chasing don't waterfalls. Don't be doing that. No, don't no. be doing that. No, but no, she, luckily she wasn't. She was being chased by something other than a waterfall. And, you know, at the, same, the, the plane's like been there since World War II. It's rusted. And at the same time, every movement she makes, it starts to rust. She gets into the plane, makes it through. And at the same time, that plane's falling apart because it's been there since... World War Two, mm -hmm. and at the same time, I was like, "Okay, how is she going to get out of this one?" We know she has, but how? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it was Pacific Rim. To kind of compare that was just a fun popcorn flick. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of how are they going to get out of this one because they set up a plan and then it fails, and, mm. and they set up another plan and that doesn't go so well either. But you know, finally their plan comes through. Spoiler alert: the good guys win. I go, mean, go figure. Duh, but. The way that it's done it is a lot of fun. There's humor, but it's not over the top like it was with Thor Ragnarok. There's action, but it's not shaky cam. I don't know what's going on. Michael Bay movie, shaky cam. I didn't think better than Michael Bay for shaky cam. There was uh, good character development, even though they, they didn't spend a lot of time on the characters, but what they did was actually pretty good. Yeah. There was... Uh, um, um, a love interest involved, but she wasn't on the screen very much. She but didn't get squished, did she? No, okay. no, she didn't. But it was, it was actually a very enjoyable movie. I was going in with low expectations yeah. because it's Pacific Rim. I mean, come on, this isn't exactly The Godfather, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Well, who's directing this one? Uh, Gear, I, I know Del Toro. Del, Del Toro was the producer, but I didn't recognize the director's name. Oh, okay. Maybe somebody in our chat can uh, enlighten me, por favor. Oh, I didn't tell you, you know, being at the school that I am, I didn't, I didn't tell about the big fight that we had. Oh, I heard about that. Oh, Lord, here yeah, we go. Yeah, because here we go. It's, like, you it's know, a it day that ends in Y, isn't it? No, it was at the same time what's happened, you know, because a lot of the people, you know, a lot of my kids follow the follow the show. And like, no, I think that, you know, Kirby should win. No, I think Superman should win. It was terrible. Ah, oh, God, there was God. lockers and everything. Oh. Being, yeah, so. That's no good. All right, so I'm, I'm following the chat here. John Luga wants to know who cares about Tomb Raider. Um, everybody who grew up in the 90s. Pretty much. Yeah. With with those pixelated um, shoulders. Underwire. Shoulders. Shoulders. Yeah, shoulders. Yeah, shoulders. Shoulders. Yeah, shoulders. Shoulders. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Goodness. Here we go. Okay, well, I think we're, I think we're good. We're yeah. ready to let, – let's let the people know what, that what we're in for tonight. We are going to have giveaways coming out like crazy thanks to the Daily Geek. We've partnered with them. And uh, I think with, with minor exceptions, and maybe not even that, we may have giveaways every single week for the next couple of months so you all can keep coming back, keep trying to win stuff. And, of course, you're going to be somewhere on Saturday. Yes. We'll be talking about where I'm going to be. We're going to talk about our well, – Let's talk about that because once we get to the show, it's where you were. Oh, yeah, good yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so San Antonio, I will be at Yumicon with Minion. Woohoo! You can come and, out and meet us. And Jason Olivari, one of our staff writers, that's at the Wonderland Mall of the Americas on 410 and Fredericksburg. So that's right there by that big Dave and Busters that they have. Uh, you can come out and see us. We'll be covering Yumicon. 
And Goose, you're going to be the Easter egg I'm going to be, yes. I'm going to be at the 9.30 a.m. The Answer, a.m. 6.30, the word fishantonio.com, Easter extravaganza at Trader's Village. We're going to have 20,000 eggs for hunts of all ages. Find out more at 9.30 a.m. The Answer.com. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, okay. DC News. So Justice League is... Well, sucks. We're going to talk about why well, why, why it sucks. Well, Justice League may suck, but there's some great stuff coming out of DC on television. Oh, and we're going to be talking yes. about that as well. Goose and Minion, you saw Krypton? You yes. You saw Krypton? Okay. Well, I was also in the middle, you know, doing that cooking for my dogs and doing laundry, so and updating ah, there, there figure theater. <laughs> uh, Star Wars finally answers one of the biggest questions of the franchise. Now, you know Star Wars fans, they love to know everything about everything, and finally they have let us know one of the greatest mysteries of the entire franchise. We'll be talking about that as well. March Madness. Woo! We're talking about the Elite Eight. Who's moving on? We, we, we've all decided it's in, so we'll talk about that. Oh, we should tell them about a special thing coming to the pre-show the next two weeks as well. Which is? Final. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. we'll talk about that here. We'll talk up. about during the show, so that way we give the radio audience a chance uh, to tune in as well. Let's see. Ready Player One is getting ready to come out. I'm going to tell you what frightens me the most about Ready Player One, the movie. And Marvel News. We're officially just a month away from Infinity War, and we n hardly talked about it whatsoever on here until tonight. And when we get to DC, is, is in your opinion, is Arrowverse having their own version of Infinity War? I think I missed the error last week. Oh, no, Legends. Oh, Leg oh Legends. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll <laughs> we can bring that up a little bit as well. Okay. The Infinity War nobody's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the memes that are going around that says that uh, Marvel says that this is the most ambitious crossover of all time. And then all the memes that are coming out, like Scooby-Doo hanging out with Johnny Bravo. <laughs> Star Trek Generations. Uh, Star Trek Generations, uh, there was one crossover. Oh, God, what was Power that? Power Rangers one? and Ninja Turtles. Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles, thank you. It's, it's like, no, man, no, we got way more ambitious <laughs> crossovers than this going on. Uh, Family Guy and the Simpsons, Family yep. Guy and South Park. I mean, come on now. Well, if you really want to get to it, like, every week with my action figure theater. So. Yes. Every week on action figure theater. That's very on true. That one, what I put that. up was uh, Black Panther paid a visit to Death Star 3. Can be found at Facebook.com slash yes. action figure theater. There yes. it is. All right, so I think we're rip fire and ready to go. So All let's right. uh, let's light this candle. Make sure, yeah, okay. Let's light this puppy up. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Your fortress of solitude. Greetings, program. Glad you're alive. Your sanctum sanctorum. Resistance is futile. Welcome. You should be first trial. This is where the fun begins. Proof positive that geeks have inherited the earth. It's showtime. It's time to get your geek on. You will complete me. With Dave Gramellion. Greetings to all you geeks out there. I am Dave Gramillion. Welcome to Get Your Geek On. This is the premier talk radio show for Star Wars, Star Trek, DC, Marvel, video gaming, esports, really all things geek that have dominated this little world of ours. You see, geek is not what it was 20 or 30 years ago. Geek is in. Geek is very in. Geek is now the mainstream, and we are here to talk the latest and greatest that is geek right here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio and 9.30 a.m. The Answer dot com. This is season two, episode number 41. We are 11 weeks away from the grand anniversary of the show. But tonight, ooh, we've got a fun giveaway that we're going to talk about and talk about giveaways in general lately because uh, thanks to a recent partnership with The Daily Geek, we have a plethora of items to start giving away over the next, well, I guess you could say pretty much the next 11 weeks. Um, Goose, would you say that we have a, a plethora? <laughs> you have a plethora. Cafe, what is a plethora? Why, Wapo? Well, you told me I have a plethora. And I just would like to know if you know what a plethora is. I would not like to think that a person would tell someone he has a plethora and find out that that person has no idea what it means to have a plethora. 
We have some DC news we're going to talk about as well. Justice League, Justice League, Justice League. How bad did it flop? We're going to tell you exactly how bad it was coming up. A little bit of Star Wars news. The founders, the ones, the uh, powers that be at Lucasfilm have finally, at long last, answered one of the greatest mysteries in the entire franchise. Yes, the truth is out, and we're going to be talking about that truth as well. March Madness, the Elite Eight is upon us. Who is moving out of the Sweet 16? Who survives? We have upsets. And we're going to be talking about how you can watch some of the judging going down coming up in the next couple of weeks. Ready Player One comes out on the 29th, and I'm going to tell you what frightens me the most about it. What scares me the most about that movie? We'll be talking about that as well. And Marvel News. We have not talked about the Infinity War movie all that much. I've left that to the other talking heads and clickbait sites and that sort of thing. But now we are starting to tackle Infinity War. What is it? Where is that last Infinity Stone? How many characters are in this movie? And who's not going to make it out? We're going to be talking about all that and more coming up after the bottom half of the hour news break. But first, let me introduce my motley crew here on my left, your right, as you look across the radio dial. You will see the founder, the Grand Poobah, the Grand Admiral of the Star Wars Society of San Antonio. He is our minion, Peter Gonzalez. Oh, I've missed my crickets. (laughs) <laughs> this is the first my time we've been back crickets. in the studio for, for quite a while. I can tell. <laughs> but uh, for tonight, I do have a de- special dedication. It's it's Minion's dedication. Ooh, all right. Who's mm-hmm. your, your dedication to? My dedication for this sh- for tonight's episode is going out to Shannon Lynn, a.k.a. Mara Jade. If you ever got a chance to see any of the, 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 right, any of the Star Wars EU books, I know that's no longer considered canon, she was the model for that. And she's going through a huge battle right now. And uh, so for tonight's show... This is going on to you, Shannon. All right, so Shannon is Mara Jade, in Mm -hmm. case anybody asks about that, and we do wish her all the best in her recovery. If you look further to my left, your right, as you look across the radio dial, you will see the man spinning the ones and zeros. He is our sound prognosticator, and he is Goose. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Short, sweet, to the point. I like that. Yes, indeed. My crickets are longer than that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, but mine was Alley Cat cosplay, so yeah. there's that. Very true. So, uh, Goose, right, h- how are you doing, Goose? I'm doing all right. It's been a. I've been here every time. Yes, you have. <laughs> I've had to deal Most with you. <laughs> I've had to deal with you separately. Now I have to deal with the two of you together. Yeah, That's great. And Bob. And Bob, of and course. Bob. But Bob, our, our Rancor, the mascot there. So, all righty. So, uh, let me talk briefly. We are actually at Yumicon for this weekend. We spent Saturday there and had just a fantastic time. It is down at the Wonderland Mall of the Americas on 410 and Fredericksburg Road. That's kind of I-10, 410, Fredericksburg. I mean, you know, it's behind the Dave and Buster's there. And we invite you all to come out. They have tournaments going on. They have uh, cosplay that's going on. A lot of vendors that are there. Their cash prizes are going up. And they have a room set up to watch anime movies. So if you just want to come hang out in an air-conditioned building because it's Unlike most of the, the Northeast, it's a little toasty down here. Then you can head in there and watch some anime movies. Just kind of chill out. And if you're wondering about the Dragon Ball game, the card game, they're actually going to be playing it there at Yumicon. Yumicon, it was just a lot of fun. So I strongly recommend that y'all head out there tomorrow because t- it's over tomorrow. So go head out there and uh, tell them you, you want to get your geek on. All right, so let's talk also about a giveaway that we're getting ready to do. Uh, if you want to win a limited edition print by Joe Caroni, autographed by the man himself, and the print is of Slave Leia and Boba Fett, oh, have we got a deal for you. All you have to do is you can find the post on Facebook.com slash GYGO Radio or over at uh, Facebook.com slash The Daily Geek. We've partnered with The Daily Geek to give this print away, an autographed print all you have to do is very simple. Like the post, drop a comment about your favorite character. That's it. And it, Goose is not eligible to win again. Neither is Minion. And, or ne- neither am I. You know, it's, it's not my game. Bob's not <laughs> we're, even We're eligible just partnering with them. So yeah. uh, that'd be kind of rude, though, if I won it. So. Uh, but but here's, here's the story, though, is that that's all you have to do. And if anybody puts down Sith Lord Jar Jar Binks as, you know, endorsed by Dave, I will see to it that you automatically do not win. Come on. Do it. Stop it. Do it. Stop it. 
So that's how you can win right there. Want to give big thanks to Joe Caroni. You can check out his website, Joe Caroni. That's C O R R O N E Y, joecaroni.com for more of his art. Uh, yes, Goose, you so had So when you mentioned there. giveaway, I thought you were talking about giving away our minion. Well, I, I'm, part of the buy one, I'm part of the buy one, get one free. I'm the one you get for free. <laughs> <laughs> you're, okay. you're, you're the go on the BOGO? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, well, well that makes sense. All right, so with that being said, let's move on, and we're going to start talking here about some DC news, shall we? Before we get too deep into this, also want to mention that when we do shipping out of San Antonio, we always do our shipping from the mailing spot. The mailing spot has two locations, and one of them that I love to go to is on Blanco Road, just north of 1604. It's really not too far outside the loop on the north side of San Antonio. They have shipping. They have all sorts of uh, shipping products. They have post office boxes. It's a really great place to go. I strongly recommend that y'all check out the mailing spot. Alrighty, so let's talk about the DCEU. You know this is one of my most favorite topics. You know why? Why? Because it's just so much fun. Because he to, gets to trash it. Yes, it's so easy to trash it. It really is. Just I mean, kick us when we're down. I mean, they, they, they keep lobbing these softballs right it's, over the middle it's of the plate. It's not many times you get to say something negative about Joss Whedon, and he, he relishes these moments. Yeah, so, so Warner Brothers has this, this big giant shakeup over the DCEU, and now we find out for good reason. Take a wild guess as to where Justice League, their magnum opus, their version of Infinity War, where does it rank at the box office when it comes to the DCEU movies? Number one. Mm. Uh, oh, oh, good. N- number one? Number yes, one. You, you are correct. It is number one at the bottom. Wait, that it, mathematically, it's, it's, is it's, that? It's, wait, well, yeah. If you, it that, is best no. at being the worst movie. That would make it number five? That would make it number five. Yeah, that's, are we talking just suicide? Which I think alone? that actually is Wesley Crusher on Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> Domestically speaking, it goes like this. Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, Suicide Squad, Man of Steel, and then Justice League brings up the rear at $229 million domestically. But they're still pulling for it. <laughs> it yeah, they're still high hope. Oh, hey, hey, the Blu-ray sales will totally make up for it. Yeah. It's not to go no, buy my not, copy. Well, I bought Coco first before I bought well, Justice League. I, I would buy a lot of things before I bought Justice League. So, uh, mm. When's his birthday again, Goose? So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, n- not not really. All right, So, but that's just domestically. Let's talk worldwide because, you know, some movies – they just had this huge worldwide follow, like Fast and Furious. Good has, God. It has an enormous worldwide following, so maybe Why? that made up for it. So worldwide, it goes like this. Batman, Superman on top, then Wonder Woman, then Suicide Squad, then Man of Steel, and then Justice League at $657 million. That makes me sad. Now, I, I know a lot of people think, oh, God, $657 million. That, that's a lot. Yeah, that's half of what The Last Jedi made. That's Harrison Ford's salary alone for Last Jedi. I think Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. made that much on the Avengers. Actually, true story. They're actually spending more than that box office gross on the next two Avengers movies. The budget for the Infinity War movie is rumored to be somewhere between six hundred and seven hundred million dollars, and the box office for Justice League was six fifty seven worldwide. Of its pocket change for Bruce Wayne. Ooh. I, I suppose. Yep. Yikes. Oh, gracious. So there's some hope on the horizon because Aquaman comes out this Christmas and then Shazam next April. And there's starting to be a little bit of good buzz about Shazam. We posted the yeah. logo of, of the movie there on face on our Facebook page. We and po- and, we and there were some uh, leaked photos. Of there were some leaked actors. photos of um, Zachary in the suit. And well, is that him or is that a cosplayer? It's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, oh, come on. <laughs> it was a very good cosplay, almost as if it was done by professionals. Hey, oh, and then Wonder Woman 2 comes out next November. So Thanksgiving of 2019. That's weird that it's going to come out like two, what is it, two and a half years? Well, I, I guess, the well, they did delay for a while because they had that shake up and then Patty Jenkins wasn't on board. They had to get her back. Uh, and then, of course, Gal Gadot got pregnant. So yeah. a little bit of delay there. So I, I can see, you know, things kind of adding up. Plus, they, yeah, they really got to get their act together. I mean, that, that the DCEU house is just not in order at all. Well, that may be the case in the movies. But um, on TV... TV... Speaking of which, Matt Ryan, the DC TV Constantine, 
He now has officially joined Legends of Tomorrow as a yes. cast member in season four, which is likely to premiere sometime in October over on the CW. Yes. Yeah, so he had a one season run on NBC. As which character? As Constantine. 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 I'll say this much about Constantine. Okay. <laughs> Since we're doing all this stuff over here, uh, he belongs in the CW. Yes. Let me see. And per he fits in perfectly with the Legends crew. He did, he did really I'm, good on Arrow when I'm, he made his guest spot on I'm Arrow. I'm also glad because all at the same time, when, remember to forget one point, Supergirl was on CW, and it's like it didn't work. It was on CBS. On uh, CBS, I'm sorry. Before they moved over there, it's like this is where she belongs. Isn't that his this thing? is where Constantine belongs. Isn't that Constantine's thing? He brings his arms together, and he has the, like, the tattoos that match. I have no idea. I, I saw it in the movie, so that's why I figured it was in the show. That's the, and it's Keanu Reeves. No. It was Keanu, no. Keanu, Keanu Reeves playing Constantine. Anyway, okay, <laughs> but but to kind of up, up, go ahead. have you seen the the I little meme about um, the the last Infinity Stone? Uh, yes, the dog. <laughs> That was pretty good. They said it was inside John Wick's dog. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> uh, and speaking of DC TV, Krypton. Oh, oh yeah. uh, y'all yes. caught the pilot for Krypton. Yeah, yeah. It looks awesome. Now I will say this: when I first heard they're going to do a Krypton TV show, I'm like. I, I know how it ends, guys. I, li I like what yeah, John. Like li Titanic, we know the boat sinks. I mean, come on. I like what John Lugo said. I, I, I bet Krypton ends in a blast, <laughs> which it probably will. But it takes place about two hundred years in the past, from the times from Superman, and it's got a little bit of a Back to the Future element to it. I'm not going to spoil it outside of you know you see in the trailers, Adam Strange comes from the future with the cape of Superman, and it's up to Sigil to save Krypton from Brainiac. At yep. least that's the story thus far. And that's been in the trailers. There's nothing spoily there. It's been in the trailers. You need to get over yourself. And so you should go watch it. It's, it's on the Sci-Fi app if you have the Sci-Fi app. Also, if you have cable or satellite, go find Sci-Fi on demand and watch the Krypton premiere. Yeah, you know, true story. You know how Krypton actually is going to end. I actually know the ending. Mm -hmm. It's going to end with Jyn Erso leading a team to go to the archives to, to get the plans for the Death Star before it explodes. And it's just going to blow everybody away. Absolutely. Like, uh, It'll go out with a bang. Hey. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're just so bad. Anyway. All righty. So let's. No more uh, coffee for us. Yeah, no, no more. So let's go ahead and move on. We're going to talk about a little bit of Star Wars news here, shall we? I'm looking forward to completing your training. In time, you will call me a master. All righty, so Forces of Destiny is back. Those wonderful little two to three minute shorts that everybody hated. And still do. Because the dolls look very creepy, and they were all about women to start with, which everyone's like, really? I mean, we get the whole Me Too movement, but really? And come on now. So now they finally come out, and they have answered one of the most critical questions in the Star Wars franchise. And I'm not talking about little things like did Boba Fett survive the Sarlacc or where did. where did Luke get his lightsaber? No, 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 none of that, none of that. Instead, they finally revealed an animated short where Leia meets Maz Kanata and gets the uh, Bosch, I, I guess that's Bausch. Bausch, Bausch disguise for Return of the Jedi. How about that? Because why not? Why not? Because why not? I mean, you know, that's just that that truly is one of the greatest mysteries of all time. <laughs> Yeah, finally we know now. And knowing is half the battle. So G.I. Joe. Joe. So it turns out Leia and Bosch kind of shoot at each other. Leia then shoots the gun out of Bosch's hand, and rather than shooting her again, runs up to her with the gun in her hand, mind you, mm -hmm. runs up to her, and they get in this fist fight. Um, <laughs> that was not really so much of a fist fight, more of a, like, a stand off. <laughs> more, more, more like, you know... Pushing and shoving like Princess a Leia fight. is certainly not Indiana Jones. Not even a little bit. I, I, I just I just laughed at that and, but, and so but, so eventually they, they knock Bausch out and and they're able now to finally we know where she got the disguise. See, from. I thought they were going to finally show that Jar Jar Binks was a Sith Lord. But to, to I swear to, to God, to the, the, my but to the Bausch credit of this up over here, uh, I did like the the little exchange there with Chewie and, and Maz. That was cute. Well, that w that was cute, kind of cliche at this point now, mm -hmm. but. At the same time, yeah, okay, but uh, it just kind of uh, made me laugh because StarWars.com announced it as this huge thing. Finally, we finally know where she got the disguise, and I'm like, who cares? <laughs> exactly. I mean, I, I don't know 
you know, how she got, who braided her hair on Hoth. But I don't need a story for that either. It's hilarious how Star Wars fans and apparently now Lucasfilm in general thinks that we have to know every little detail about every little thing of the franchise. I know who braided her hair on Endor. No, 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 Hoth. A whole Hoth. I know who did that too. Oh, who did that? Who that? It was the force ghost of Jar Jar Binks, the Sith Lord. I am now. I'm oh going to throw something at you. What, are you kidding me here? Yeah, gracious. All right. So with that being said, in the little bit of time that we have left, let's shift over and let's talk some March Madness. All righty. So if you are following the actual March Madness, boy, are you mad if you pick Virginia? <laughs> you're mad if you pick a few different teams at this point. Yep, and in fact, your bracket may also be busted if you follow our March Madness, which is brought to you by our friends. Uh, they chipped in pack- packages and prizes from SeaWorld San Antonio, Dallas Fuel, Dragon's Lair of Alamo Ranch, Nightwatch Games, Legion M, uh, just a whole host of prizes, including a nice, huge, big bundle from HyperX. You could even say co-host of prizes. Hey, oh, there you go. So who's moving on to the Elite Eight? Who is moving on? So our Sweet 16, was it had a lot of matchups. It, mm-hmm. it was very exciting stuff. Let's start in the video game bracket. All righty. In the video game bracket, we started off with Kirby versus Oni. Oni, the secret hidden boss. You have to do a certain number of things to get to fight this guy in Super Street Fighter form. Uh, so I'm beg your pardon, Super Street Fighter 4, and Kirby wins. It really wasn't that close between us. I mean, Kirby is just a boss. Outstanding stamina, great strength, can absorb certain abilities and then use them against you. And as, as fearsome as Oni is, just can't really hold a candle to Kirby. So Kirby moves on to the Elite Eight, where he will face an upset Number one seeded Sephiroth was upset by number four seeded Arthas. Arthas is the great grand boss in World of Warcraft, uh, one of their Ice Crown Citadel expansions, something along those lines. I'm sorry, Wrath of the Lich King, I think, expansion? That's what it was. So Arthas pulls off the upset and upsets the number one seeded Sephiroth. So it's Kirby versus Arthas in the Elite Eight. Winner goes to the Final Four, and then we move on to our Star Wars bracket. This surprised me. I mean, there were some major upsets on this one. Yeah, there were actually. I mean, I had, when I was doing some of the judging, I was like, okay, how? Okay, and I had to really think about a couple of these ones. So in the first the first round matchup here, we have Yoda versus Darth Sidious. Winner goes to the Elite Eight, and this one goes back and forth for quite a bit because mm-hmm. they fought Revenge of the Sith. Yoda is this wise master, but we see him in The Force Awakens, and I'm sorry, The Last Jedi, and then... Sidious is Sidious and so on and so forth but ultimately we had to give the nod to Yoda so Yoda will move on and he uh, Sidious was the last dark side user he's eliminated and on the other side of the bracket we had Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Luke Skywalker Hello controversial there. pick controversial pick what a matchup get this Kenobi upsets the number one seed Luke Skywalker that's two number one seeds that have now been knocked out Kenobi will face Master Yoda in the Elite Eight. Well, on, on to Luke's defense, he finally gets to go and pick up those power converters he's been wanting since oh. 1977. Uh, you think maybe someone will give him a hand? Oh, maybe some green milk. Maybe some green milk in there. <laughs> All right, so winner of that goes to the final four. And then we have our Marvel bracket. Oh. Whoop, hello. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, in our Marvel bracket, we had this was a great matchup Thor versus Thanos. That was tough. This one went back and forth for a while, but ultimately we had to decide that Thanos just didn't have the firepower to keep up with Thor. Uh, Thor's got the lightning, he can fly, he's got the hammer, he's got, really, he's got the hair, you know, so he's he's got that. And he's not purple. He can certainly keep an eye on you. (laughs) Well, that's all he's got left. That's all he's got left. He's not purple. And so we he can bring the that, thunder and the lightning. There we go. So we decided that Thor will be moving on to the Elite Eight to face off against the winner of Jean Grey and Apocalypse. Ooh. Keeping in mind that all characters are in their prime, I didn't see how we could deny Jean Grey this but victory. But Jean Grey is not Phoenix. No, she's not. But yeah, still, facing off against Apocalypse, Jean Grey is one very potent character. 
in a sense, she was more powerful than Xavier was. Yeah. So yeah. we had to roll with her on this one. So you will have Thor versus Jean Grey. Winner goes to the final four. And that leads us over to our dark side bracket. Or DC bracket. Uh, DC bracket. Uh, hello. I was about to say. Way to, way to spoil the results there. Yeah, sir. sorry about that. <laughs> so our DC bracket, we had dark side versus Doomsday. Doomsday. And as awesome as Doomsday is, yeah, we had to go with Dark Side on this one. So Dark Side will move on to the Elite Eight. Well, that was kind of unanimous, wasn't it? It, it was, but it was close on my on right. my bracket. Yeah. It, it was close. So now we have Superman versus the Martian Manhunter. I'm for me it was, it for, was kind of, for, for me it wasn't that close. Not really. No, I mean, I had to think about it for a second. I thought, nah. Yeah, I mean, there are just too many check marks for Superman on this one. So Superman will face off against Dark Side. Winner goes to the final four. Didn't they? This is a rematch from last year, isn't it? Superman and Dark Side? I believe it is. I, it yeah. might it might be. So this is what it boils down to now. Dark Side Superman, winner goes to the final four. Who is going to be the champion of their bracket? Well, here's how we're going to start doing things now. Starting next week. I think it's next week. Next week. We could do it next week. Why not? Yeah, we can do it next week. Yeah. We will actually do our judging live on Facebook. You can go to Facebook.com slash GYGO radio starting at about 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, you know, coordinate that as you will. You will see us on camera. We will do our judging right here in front of your very eyes. It's going to get heated in here. Yeah, it, it's... it's yeah, look at these matchups. Are you kidding me? Kirby, Arthas, Yoda, Kenobi, Battle Thor, Jean Grey, Dark Side, Dang. Superman. Yep. Because some of my students, they're... I so for the next three weeks, the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and the Finals. Or do we want to do the Final? No, we have to because we have popular vote. Right. Yeah. So we have so to. So for we the have, next three weeks, we right to, here on Facebook Live. That's right. Three weeks to go until this whole thing has been decided, and it's going to come down to it, guys. This is going to be a fun one. So you can also vote. We're going to put polls up, and your popular vote counts. There are five categories total on how we base who wins and who doesn't. One is. A random roll of the D20 for that little bit of March Madness. Your popular vote is another category. So whoever wins popular vote, that's 20%. Who has the most strength? Who has the most intellect? And who has the most durability? Because if you can dish it out, you better be able to take it as well. And those five categories, we sit here and say, okay, so Superman wins this 4-1. to one, Or Kenobi wins this 3-2. to two, Or, in some cases, 5 nothing. And then we put our judging votes together, and we decide who wins and who's just going home. So this is this is going to be interesting. These, these matchups going forward. Yeah, because some of my students picked up some of these guys, and they're going to be really upset for some of these. Yeah, pretty much. I oh, mean, well. the two number one well. seeds are already out. This is going to be a lot of fun. The other two seeds that are left that are number ones are Thor and Superman. And uh, Dark Side Superman, it jumps out at you as being the most obvious. Oh my God, I can't wait for this matchup. I think the most interesting matchup is going to be Kirby Arthas. Mm -hmm. Ooh. The Lich King versus the little pink ball of fluff and stuff. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So keep your eye on that matchup as well. Polls will be up on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash G-Y-G-O official. Coming up after the bottom of the hour news break, I'm going to tell you exactly why I'm not entirely safe about Ready Player One, what scares me about it. And Marvel News. Oh, my goodness. Are we talking Infinity War or what? We'll be right back here after the bottom of the hour news break on 930 AM The Answer and 930 amtheanswer.com. So John Lugo wants to know what the hell is a Kirby, besides a vacuum. What? <laughs> besides, besides that, he is one of the most powerful video game characters of all time. He's a Nintendo-based character who has been known to swallow up entire planets. And once he swallows a character, can use their abilities against them. He's the Unicron of Nintendo. Essentially, yes. <laughs> they actually named a town after him around here too. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they'd up that? on the northeast side. Yeah. Plus, uh, they did uh, uh, they did a screw attack, did a, a battle between Kirby and Majin Buu, and Kirby won going away. 
it wasn't even that close between Kirby and Majin Buu. So it's, uh, getting back to some of my guys here when when I, when I come and see him tomorrow, one of my boys was actually smart and picked up all the number ones, but he picked Thor and Superman. So he's like, I'm getting that water burger no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so um, apparently Brian Donahoe says the Bay Strikes Back, which was actually when you think about it, Transformers two. The reason the for oh Revenge yeah. of the Bay yeah okay <laughs> the Bay Strikes Back. Uh, Mike Clements says Rogue One was better than uh, Episode Seven and Eight. Yeah, I'm gonna have to sort of disagree with you there. What? Yeah, like the only the only good part to Rogue One, not the best part. The only good part to Rogue One was the last mm, twenty or so minutes. That's about it. The rest of it you just kind of sleep through. So Gary Carr says he's mastered it all, holding a screaming newborn cooking supper and listening to Get Your Geek On all at the same time. That's the hat trick right there. I'm telling you right That's now. That's the trifecta. Very I almost nice. Wanna give, I almost want to give him something, but I have nothing to give. <laughs> I wish. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, so what are the questions that I have here? What other questions were there? Cur- Philip Ooh. said Kirby eats Thor's hammer and then can't move. <laughs> oh man yeah Thor throws the hammer at Kirby Kirby swallows it and then he's like what, what, what do I do so does this mean Thor can now wield Kirby <laughs> <laughs> wow that would be pretty scary uh, Brian Bonham wants to know what do we think about the new Lost in Space on Netflix um, I like the trailer I haven't seen the show yet though Yeah, I don't think the show's come out yet no, I think it comes out in April I'm intrigued I admit I'm, I'm getting a little annoyed by the whole everything old is new again like I heard they're gonna they're, they're remaking Charmed we knew that good I heard, god I don't heard, even start with I me heard, on that one yeah my gosh I heard they're gonna remake Buffy I've heard that why I'm gonna have to do it's the in Nancy. line for a reboot is the headline that I saw yeah that, that, so. that's what I hear but I have to do the Nancy Kerrigan why why, why? So why? they already apparently, rebooted Ghostbusters apparently so. Little Caesar said if a 16 ever beat a 1 they would give away free pizza across the country really yes well, I hadn't heard that I'm going to have to google that when we get up there so that was from our friend Marcus okay so. well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look that up because I honestly don't know uh, I'd have to double check that but alright so uh, I think Kirby got to the Final Four last year, Elite Eight, something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, Kirby, he's immensely powerful. Look, look him up, on, especially on Screw Attack, and you'll be much so impressed. Marcus has a question. Ooh, yes. Kirby versus Yoshi. Uh, Kirby wins. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean y- yes, Yoshi could swallow him, but only if he's really close. Yeah. And Yoshi doesn't really have a lot of powers other than that. Kirby has the Star Rod. Kirby has all these abilities. Yeah, I think Kirby would take that one. It would be interesting to see what would happen if Yoshi actually swallowed Kirby. What happens then? Huh. Katie, my little sister, uh, is, a, is saying, not, not relating to this, they won't redo Buffy unless Josh gives it the okay. Well, Josh has nothing better to do right now. Mm, but apparently right. they can't redo Back to the Future without Bob Semeca saying it's okay. Oh, God. They're no, going to re- remake it. Don't, don't do Don't. They don't remade, stop. like I said, I think they can't do it unless Zemeckis okay. says it's okay, and I don't, he hasn't said it's okay yet. At least, yeah, not that we know. They haven't dangled a big enough check in front of him. Is the, is, <laughs> is the thing? Oh my God! It's just everything old is new again, and and that's driving me crazy. I mean, it, you know, they remade Ben Hur for God's sake. They and did. look how well it did. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they made Spartacus into a television series. Oh Have wait, you no, ever oh, seen wait no, I'm sorry. I was. <laughs> I was still stuck on Ben Hur. I was like, oh, like they made God. Spartacus like a four season epic on stars. Well, man. That, that's a different story. That you know, okay, all right, good on them for for stretching it out. But yeah, these remakes are killing me. All righty, so let's go ahead and we'll fire up the second half of the show now, here. Don't forget about our giveaway with the Daily Geek. Don't yes. forget, head over there. All you have to do is like the post and drop a comment. Yep, that's but, it. That's it, and then you're eligible Follow, to win. There are, it's a three step process that can be found at facebookcom gygo radio there we go and thanks to the daily geek for helping set that up and of course if you want to see them those two on saturday they'll be at wonderland the america's mall if you want to see me i'll be at traders village for the um am 9 30 the answer and am 6 30 the word easter extravaganza egg, traders village egg extravaganza that's exactly. oh, so original that's okay anyway <laughs> just wanted to just give them a shout out that's all all, All right. right, so, you know, we got Bon Jovi at AT&T tonight. Yeah, we do. So we got Bon Jovi going to the second half. Are, are we halfway there? Uh-huh. All right, cool. <laughs> Hey, 
this is Charlotte Chung, and you're listening to Get Your Geek On with David Gramillion. Alrighty, welcome back from the bottom of the hour news break. This is Get Your Geek On on 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio. I am Dave Gramillion, and if you missed the first half of our show, you missed uh, some news that we have about Yumicon going on right now at the Wonderland Mall of the Americas on I-10, 410 Fredericksburg, you know, that little area behind the Super Target and Dave and & Buster's. We also talked uh, about a giveaway that we're doing in conjunction with the Daily Geek. You can win a limited, uh, uh, limited edition print of Leia and Boba Fett signed by Joe Caroni himself. We also talked quite a bit about March Madness because we decided who's moving on to the Elite Eight, and we're going to have some fun matchups coming there. That's going to be a lot of fun going forward. Some DC news. Justice League has finally finished their theatrical run, and they finished dead last out of five movies for the DCEU. Dead last. They finish at the box office below Suicide Squad. Think about that for a minute. We talked about some DC TV as well, including uh, the DC TV version of John Constantine coming to Legends of Tomorrow. Also talked about Krypton and the sci-fi series that has now premiered out that way as well. Also a little bit of Star Wars news, including finally answering one of the biggest questions in the entire franchise's history. And that is, where did Leia get that disguise when she went in to see Jabba the Hutt? Amazon. I'm sorry, where? It was on Amazon. It was on Amazon? Yeah. She went on eBay? No, uh, Amazon. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Could be Party City, too. You know, they have Depending a lot of those running on around. The, uh, on the quality of the costume. That's, that's true. <laughs> was they was it the sexy Bausch costume, by the way? No, although, you know, Party City, they just they do that for everything nowadays. No, no, I think so. I like I saw Sexy Thor for All a right. guy. So before we move on, I want to talk about Ready Player One, but I also want to talk about Laser Legend up there on the north side of San Antonio off of Lookout Road in 1604, not quite to Rolling Oaks Mall and not quite to I-35. Guys, that place is hopping, it is jumping, it is a lot of fun. The weather's going to start to warm up, but their air conditioning is fantastic. So is their 4,000 square foot video arcade, not to mention their two floor laser tag arena and their mini golf course. It's all indoors. It's wonderful. Food and drinks, including some adult beverages, are available for y'all as well. And they're going to have their own, they're going to have their own Fiesta medal again this year with all proceeds going to one of their charities. So Fiesta medals, laser tags, the, the infamous, now infamous photon torpedo. Mm-hmm. You can exercise some wonderful strategy and tactics inside their two-floor laser tag arena. You can try to knock me off of uh, Star Trek pinball, although you're not going to be able to do it. So I hold the top <laughs> score there. And that's all found at Laser Legend on the north side of San Antonio off of Lookout Road. All right, so Ready Player One. Let's talk about this movie because it comes out on the 29th. Come with me and you'll be in a world of your This is going to be an interesting movie. I've either read or heard the audiobook, which was narrated by uh, a, a certain somebody i'll get to that here in a second at least three times so when i heard they were going to come out with a movie of course i was stoked i couldn't wait for this thing he narrated it three times well i heard it three times and he was the narrator each time so it's entirely possible and the more i see of the trailers the more convinced i am that this is going to be so incredibly different from the book how so well it looks like our main characters are going to meet a lot sooner than they do in the book it looks like there's going to be a lot more interaction with them than there is in the book. Mm-hmm. I could already tell already it's going to be different because in the first trailer that came out, the main character, whose name is Wade, says that he lives here in these RV stacks in Columbus, Ohio, which is not true. It's actually Oklahoma City. And then he travels to Columbus because that's where pretty much the digital world headquarters is at, you know, in this dystopian future. Why Columbus, Ohio is never really <laughs> explained. That's like having Lubbock be the digital headquarters of the world or something. It's just kind of weird. So they've made little changes here and there, including, you know, like the amount of money that's going to be given away as the prize during the, the contest is different. And I don't know, they're just these little things. But then the, I started to see some bigger and bigger changes, and it's worrying me a little bit. If you've seen the book... I'm just, well, I want to warn you right now, it, the movie looks way different. But when I watch it, I'm going to try to separate, in my mind, this is going to be difficult, try to separate the book from the movie. 
The movie itself looks wonderful. looks fantastic. The visuals are great. The acting looks pretty good. The special effects are, are just phenomenal. But at the same time, I'm like, but they didn't do that in the book. They didn't do that in the book. They didn't do that in the book. So um, if you've read the book or if you heard the audio book, which was narrated by Wesley Crusher himself. But shut up, Wesley. Exactly. Uh, don't Just don't expect to see a lot of, of what you hope to see on screen. Uh, I, I just, I have concerns. I, I really do. I, I mean, I'm actually pretty hyped about this. I mean, I didn't even know it was a book at first until you had mentioned it. But I'm, I'm interested to see all the, the 80s references. And because when I wa- watched one of the, the Easter eggs on the, um, when they're talking about the, sp- the, the trailer and they talked about different Easter eggs, I'm like, oh, that's from Mad Max. That's the Batmobile. That's the, there's the DeLorean. They had Tracer in there. They had Tracer. Iron Giant. They had Iron Giant. They had uh, the bike from Akira. I'm like, okay, I'm going to probably have to see this thing about more than once to be able to catch everything. And, yes, I'm probably going to get the Blu-ray when it does eventually come out. Now, I know that book adaptations, they got to cut stuff, and I'm okay with that. I'm just worried that they're just cuts for no reason. Like, what, what's the point of even having him in Columbus to start to how, not how have him take two hours to get to Cincinnati. Oh, yeah, that's that's just a, a cut, cut, just real quick, and you're and you're good. I, I just I don't know. It just seems so, a, little, a little odd. So you want to talk about stuff that was lifted from a book to make a good movie? I've only got one thing to say to that, and that is. But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Another Spielberg picture, speaking of which, because Jurassic Sp- World. Spielberg is doing this one. He's doing Ready Player One as well. It, it looks good. It really, really does. And I hope that it's a great movie. But if you've read the book, I'm just warning you now, you're going to have to separate the book from the movie. Don't expect to see. I mean, of course, you should know this by now anyway, if you've seen any Harry Potters. <laughs> or Lord of the Rings. Or, or, or any Tom or Clancy. Any, or anything that was adapted. Anything. Absolutely. Just don't expect to see it on the big screen. Uh, now, speaking of Spielberg, Stephen and Harrison Ford will begin production on Indiana Jones 5. Yes, I am very hyped about this one. You are? Yes, I mean, because it's now, I'm kind of wondering what they're going to, what the MacGuffin's going to be for this one. And he cosplays as Indy. Yeah, I'm a, you well, know, that Well, yeah, that, too, that, yeah, that's true, but I mean, so are you going to be AARP? Indy? Actually, that's what I was thinking. That's going to be Raiders of the Lost AARP or Indiana Jones <laughs> and the Lost Senior C- Citizen Discount. The, the Temple of the Early uh, Buffet? Something like that. Something like know. that. So what's got you so hyped for this movie? Well, it's, it's the return to Indy. And at the same time, yeah, as, as much, as bad as, you know, the, the, believe it or not, there was one thing I did like about Crystal Skull. One thing? One thing. And that's that they brought back Karen Allen. Yes, that was That great. was the thing. And because and of all, of all the, the, the actresses, well, the, all the characters that they had, Willie Scott, no. This is not somebody who you can c- keep up with Indy. She whined too much. She just was like, nah, 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 nah. Elsa from uh, from Temple of, from um, uh, Lost Last, Crusade. Last Crusade. It was like, all right, okay. I was like, well, she's not, you know, Mary. But at the same time, as soon as you find out she's a Nazi sympathizer, nope. When she <laughs> dies at the end of the movie, you're like, all right, good, good. And that's all right. You know, we got Sean Connery still and everybody else is here. But it was Marion. It was having Indy and Marion back. We, so don't need, we, don't need, we don't need to, ha- we, we can just do away with mutt. Just, in, <laughs> just bring back Marion. So we don't do, normally talk about our Facebook chat too much that you can find at facebook.com slash so geo radio when we do the show but steven needs to be banned oh yeah why is hashtag that? bring back shia no 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 no, no. that's that's almost banding right that, there that's that's I, a mortal I think, sin you know actually we we got a quote from shia labeouf that i i actually had about bringing him back hang on here it is here it is here it is uh it's no 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 but hey, if we're going to be bringing back, and I like what what uh, Steven shined. Okay, to his credit, he says, um, "Bring back, uh, bring back short round." Yeah, and bring back Sala. Yeah, maybe I don't know what John Reese Davis is up to nowadays. He's not doing Look, anything lately. Do we, do we have that quote? I've got one thing to say about you know bringing Shia back and. The white people are here. Yeah, that's not exactly Shia's best work there. Oh, I, I, like, I, I like what uh, Jesse over here says. Uh, Indiana Jones and Lost Pilots of License. No, I think Brian Donahoe may have that one beat with Indiana Jones and the Bingo Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana Jones as, as Katie. I need 074 to come up or we're all doomed. 
Katie up over Indiana Jones on the hunt for the Walker. Hey, oh, there we go. But uh, as as much as we as, as, as much Indiana as Jones in the last nursing home. Hey, oh, oh wow. <laughs> I, I will say this much, you know, concerning Harrison, he's still in great shape for a guy his age. He he is. He he's is. in a great shape for a guy our age. <laughs> <laughs> also true. All righty. So with that being said, we've rarely talked about the Infinity War movies on here. We we've left that. We've left it. We've left it until this point. So let's go ahead and talk some Marvel news. This is that sequel to the smash hit with no equal. This one's for the true fans with Hulk hands and action figures. Flying, dining, saving you all in a city. We are officially one month away from the Infinity War movie. This and the hype. Can you feel the hype already starting to build? Well, I'm getting in shape for, as Captain America here, so yeah, I, I am feeling it. It is definitely starting to build already. Especially since I work out at 5 a.m. this morning and my legs are killing me. Yeah, right that, that too. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, I haven't felt this much hype since The Force Awakens. Yeah. <laughs> the Last Jedi didn't have this kind of hype that I'm seeing. No. And The, the Force Awakens, now we're all on record as saying that the Infinity War will outgross The Last Jedi. The big question becomes, will it outgross The Force Awakens? Force Awakens made just over $2 billion worldwide. I, it's very possible because, like we've been saying for, for several weeks now, the hype has been building on this thing for the past 10 years, ever since, since Iron Man came out, the very first Iron oh, Man. Oh, yeah. So it's like it's been 10 years of hype. And, well, and really, since, since the first Avengers movie, we've all been wanting to... As the cinematic universe has grown, we want the Avengers movies to grow with it. And now it is. And it, it's getting bigger. It's getting better every time. But I, it's just like with every trailer, it breaks the Internet. And the more news that comes out, the more people get hyped up for it. It's finally here. So, But there's one thing that is not here. We don't know where the last Infinity Stone is. There's one Infinity Stone that is not it, We haven't found it yet. So let's break this down real quick here. The Space Stone is the Tesseract. Yes. All right, now that allows the owner to travel through space with portals and teleportation. So in the trailer, mm -hmm. when you see this big portal open up and Thanos steps through, it's because he already has the Space Stone. The Mind Stone was in the Scepter, and now it's in Vision's head. And that grants the owner, according to the comics, near limitless psionic and psychic abilities. The Reality Stone was in the Aether in the Dark World. Remember that stinker? <laughs> Currently, it's with the Collector on Nowhere and can alter the fabric of reality. Yes. That's going to be easily obtainable. No problem there. Uh, the Power Stone, that's the one that was found by Ronan in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and it literally powers the other gems. The Nova Corps is holding on to that one. I don't see them holding on to that one for very long either. The this is not the Nova Corps we know from the comics. Not even close. Oh, no, 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 these guys no. are a bunch of wimps. The Time Stone is the Eye of Agamotto, which is it's what we've seen in Doctor Bless Strange. You. Thank you. Yeah. It can manipulate time itself and is guarded by the Doctor. So, Doctor Strange, don't... Doc no, Whovians, no, calm, wait, calm, calm down, down everyone. <laughs> calm down, Whovians. Uh, can you, can that'd, be a, that'd be a heck of a crossover right there. Can, but you, can you imagine Matt Smith or David Tennant with the, uh, the, mind, with the Time Stone? Oh, gracious. Okay, uh, the note for a future action figure theater. By the way, did you, did you catch the reference on Legends on Monday? No, I had to work that night. Yeah, there what was a Doctor Who reference. Oh, really? Yeah. We'll talk later. <laughs> I like this. Steve Schender says that the Soul Stone, which is one that's unknown, it's in Howard the Duck. Oh. He's got to have some purpose, right, other than, you know. Uh, uh, the, the pun of every bad joke. Giving us another I reason to, to laugh now. at Lucas. Doctor Strange goes down and said, Howard, I have come to bargain. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the Soul Stone, in the comics, so, I mean, because we don't know what its powers are in the movie, but in the comics, the keeper is Adam Warlock. We saw Adam at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. He was the guy in that cocoon-looking thing toward mm -hmm. the end there. And it can capture souls and return lost souls to life, like Peggy Carter. Or I'm thinking, Maybe how about a other... A distraction for Captain America. How about um, other villains that managed to be killed off in all the other Marvel movies? Like the Shatari or Red, 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 Red Skull. Skull? Yeah, that's a possibility yeah. as well. well. We don't know what's going to happen there. There's also a theory. I like this theory that Hamdal has it. 
And that, the, it, you know, his, his eyes do glow a little yes. yellow. And his armor, the breastplate, does contain a glowing yellow jewel. Ooh. And that this is what allows him to see across time and space. Either that or he's got really good vision. We no, were, that's another character. That's I was about another, to yeah, say. Different mm-hmm. character. And he was a good vision. So, mm. the, you know, there's always that. But uh, I, I, I don't know. It, I kind of like that theory. But, yeah, it's probably in Howard the Duck. Let's be honest here. That would be hilarious. That would be terrible. I would. I would. Love I would love to too. see a cameo from Leah Thompson if that's the case. Oh, that, oh God, absolutely. <laughs> so we have. We know he gets at least two gems mm-hmm. into the gauntlet uh, at some point. We've seen that in the trailer, so that's not a spoiler or anything. It's a question of how many will he get by the time the movie is over. Ooh. And I'm not sure. We, he's probably going to get the one out of the tesseract. Yep. I mean, uh, probably Loki will just hand it over to him rather than be killed. In a right. I have a feeling this is okay. We're going to get into that in just in a minute here. Yeah, <laughs> but we don't know about the others. We don't know when he's going to get them. We don't know where he's going to get them, or how many. Mm-hmm. Iron Man, you know, seems to think that everything's cool because he's got to come to us. He's got to come to us. Yeah, he's going to come to you with like you know three or four gems and just and throw planets at you, Tony. Come on. Pretty much, we know that seventy six characters will be in this movie. 76 heroes in the hit parade. It's a music man. Music man. 76 trombones. Yeah. Never saw that. Wow. I actually was in a high school production of that. I was in Cabaret. Yes. But that's not the That's just, that's, no, I don't want to think. Okay. All right. Moving on. All right. I know this is a late night show, but no. 76 Marvel characters will be in the movie. But the big question is. Other than is Captain Marvel in it, which I think she is. Mm. I think she is, too. The big question is, who doesn't make it out? It's already been revealed that all the contracts for the main characters in the first couple of phases of the, of the Marvel series, their contracts are up. Mm-hmm. At, the, at the end of four. At, at the end of the last Avengers Infinity War movie, part two, whatever they're going to yeah. call that. Avengers 4. So that would be Iron Man, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Captain America, and Thor. Yeah, because I actually read... On uh, something today that um, on Thursday, that, yeah, actually, right on Thursday, that um, Chris Evans contracted. He he said he's he's done basically with MCU. Which now begs the question: Who doesn't make this out? Somebody's got to die. It's about time. Technically, Chris Evans should have died in, in Civil War. Yeah, <laughs> it was Bucky picking up the mantle, but he didn't. So okay, we'll we'll give him the um, pass for that. But who doesn't make it out of Infinity War? Who dies? I, I think one of the first ones who's probably not going to make it out is going to be Loki. You think Loki's, um, Loki's I think I have, so? I, I have it's some, to give it some some weight here. Yeah, Goose. Yeah. You think he's done for? You think he's done for? I do. All right, so I think there's a good chance that Iron Man dies out of this one. Uh, I think it's a foregone conclusion that Captain America dies. Yeah. I think that's something that everybody can see coming a mile away. I don't think there's any way that Chris Evans makes this, makes it out of these movies alive. I, I have yep, to agree. I agree with you. Okay, so... But that opens up, you know, who's going to be Captain America? Bucky. Bucky. Or Falcon. No, Bucky first. Yeah. Okay. If they follow the comics, it, which they haven't always done. It's kind of like Batman. Dick Grayson always gets first shot at being the new Batman if Bruce ever gives it up. <laughs> Depends if he wants it or not. Well, like I said, he always gets first shot. Right. And he says he doesn't want it, but he's done it twice. Yeah. Yeah. If this were a Star Wars movie, we'd want to know who four shot first. Anyway. No? All right. No? There's no, okay. I'm sorry. All right. Mm. All right. What about Vision? Because Vision has the, the Mind Stone. I think something's just going to happen with him because th- you see it getting ripped out of him. Yes, but does he die? Or he could become human. Or, yeah, he's just mortal and runs away yeah. with Black Widow or something. So no, uh, wh- Scarlet Witch. Oh, yeah, Scarlet Witch, sorry. So what do you think the odds are that Vision actually dies in the movie? 50-50? 50-50. Yeah. Okay. What about Nebula? I don't think I th- she's going to make it. I think she's done. I think mm-hmm. she's done, too. I think that's like a 90% chance that she's going to yeah. go up against Thanos. She's going to have this... This revenge, hate-filled, fueled rage, whatever, and Thanos just like swats her and says, uh, "You're disappointing," and crushes her, and that's it. Pretty much, I can see. Yeah. Ronan almost did that. Pretty almost. M- almost, and uh, Thanos almost did it in Guardians. True. So, so yeah, I don't think Nebula makes. She just it out. dodged a couple of bullets. Here's yeah. here's an interesting thing. We know Spider-Man gets into a fight with Thanos. Not sure about that, but here's the big question. What about Hawkeye? Because he's not on the poster. I've heard a theory about that. that he's 
he, he, the reason why he's not there because he's doing some other mission. Or he's well, he's also in semi-retirement. Yeah. Well, that's true, but he's still he's an Avenger. He's Hawkeye. You'd think they would bring everyone together for this. I don't think a bow and arrow is going to do much good against that. Thanos. Was that wasn't he also in jail at the end of Civil War and, and, uh, he gets and broken Cap out. busted him out? Yeah. So What's he this about hokey religions and a blaster at your side? Wow. <laughs> nice one. Thank you very much. He's, he'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if Hawkeye is supposed to be Captain America and Captain America is in Wakanda with Bucky, then where is, where is Hawkeye? What is he up to? He's on his farm with his kids. I don't think he is. I think he's off to find the Soul Stone. I think he's off to find the Soul Stone. Well, the one idea that I thought that, that uh, somebody who is, I don't think is going to make it out of here, Drax. Oh, you, really? I don't think Drax is going to make it. What makes you think that? Well, the phone, because uh, he, he, he's got this thing against Thanos. He's got this vendetta against Thanos, but I don't think he's going to make it. His, And I, I don't know what Dave Bautista's... Uh, his contract looks like, but I have a feeling just to give a little bit of some extra, extra weight there so that the Guardians can get the, the hit. I think Drax is not going to I think that's it. where Nebula is going to come into play. I think that Drax will see her go down and be like, whoa, okay. And I think he'll actually feel a little bit of empathy for her where he hadn't before. And then he goes after Thanos, and then he bites it. And then he bites the dust. I mean, somebody has to die. That, that, I mean, that has to be. There are too many Marvel characters, and it's Thanos. Somebody's going to die out of this one. I don't think it's going to be Spider-Man, though. Yeah, because Tom Holland's got his movies. Yeah, we see him in the ground. No, it's not going to be Spider-Man. It's not going to be Spider-Man. I, I don't There's only his third it. appearance. <gasps> Unless. Three. It does yeah. happen in threes. It does happen in threes. Remember, that's right. Kevin Feige said that they got inspiration from Star Trek. And in Star Trek, every third movie, something goes horribly wrong. Which means in Spider-Man 3, then... Venom's going to show up in Spider-Man 3. Oh, God, Dang not again. Not again. So how, th the other big question is, how does the movie end? With to be with continued? Credits? Well, besides, besides with that. With credits? Besides no, that, no, no. It ends with a scene. <laughs> yeah, with, with an end credit scene. But there has to be a, a cliffhanger leading into the following fourth movie. And I think it would be really cool if, okay, so Thanos' whole goal is to bring balance to the universe. And in the comics, he does it by wiping out half the universe, and to be fair, he also does it to kind of impress death. He's mm -hmm. kind of you know got a thing for her. And I think that it, it'd be really cool if it ended with him snapping his fingers and half the universe just blinks out. I think it'd be really fun if Ewan McGregor shows up and says, you were the chosen one! <laughs> well, he can only say that if Ewan McGregor had the high ground. He could only, that's the only way he could do it, and Thanos is kind of a big guy, so I'm, I'm just this saying. He's got some really, Obi-Wan's got to have some real high ground here. So. It's some, yeah, he'd have to be like on a building or something. <laughs> or a mountain. Something like Somewhere that. Somewhere in Wakanda. You weren't my brother, Thanos. Uh, be, oh, what kind, what kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, so Thanos snaps his fingers, and like, you know, five Avengers, half of Earth, and half the universe just half dies. Half the Disney universe. Half the Disney, the Disney universe. <laughs> Not Mickey. Oh, there goes Pluto. Oh, that's in Kingdom Hearts 3 that comes out. Oh, uh, okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, there, uh, there goes, you know, the Star Wars universe. Let's face it, but it, now DC has a chance. <laughs> but if, if Disney's writing this, then, I'm sorry, all of DC would have magically blanked out. How did that happen? Ah, oh, heck. I can see that happen. There goes the so universe. There goes the universe. Well... Who do we have in our final four? <laughs> we don't have a final four. We have an elite eight. So. Have, okay, well, who, who's left? Okay. Thanos and Thor. Uh, no, Thor won that one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Thor. It's Thor and Jean Grey. Thor and Jean Grey. That's right. Darn it. Ugh. Mm. So, oh, well. <laughs> so we we want to hear from y'all. We want to hear about your. It, it's time to start ramping up the hype on Infinity War. So we want to hear from you over at Facebook.com/slash/gygoradio. Give us your Infinity War memes, theories fan theories, your own theories you came up with on Friday night after having too much Taco Donna. We want to hear it That's all. That's how the Jar Jar Sith Lord thing came out. Let us know all about it. Uh, I so, like what Steven Shinner yeah. says. Thir Thanos turns into Cable. Wow. Just, wow. Snaps the fingers, turns into Cable, snaps back. <laughs> Did you see the uh, the, new, the new Deadpool 2 trailer that came <laughs> yeah. out on Thursday? I'm all out of love. Oh my god, that was I'm hilarious. So Let's call ourselves the X-Force. <laughs> think that's a little derivative <laughs> yes i do <laughs> that's gonna be a good movie too oh my God. I'm, gonna, yes. I'm gonna like that one so oh uh, facebook.com slash gygo radio is where we want to hear all of your infinity war theories tell us all about it we're gonna start the hype train for this if you're not already on board climb on board with us i'm gonna go on a limb here and say that for sure 
It's going to make more money than The Last Jedi. I'm going to call my shot right now and say one and three quarters billion. I don't think we're going to hit two billion with Infinity War, but I think it's going to come close. Very, very close. I think it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens going on here on forward. We'll get some news from Fandango also. I want to hear about their pre-ticket sales and see what happens. All right, so that'll go ahead, and that will wrap it up here. If you want to tweet at us, you can find us at GYGO underscore radio. You can shoot me an email at Dave the Host at GetYourGeekOn.org. For Goose, for Minion, and for myself, I want to thank all of our sponsors, Laser Legend of the Mailing Spot. Thank you for listening, and make sure to get your geek on every single day. So apparently a and in Michigan are playing tonight. Yeah, I want to thank you all for the countdown. I'm already nervous enough about that. <laughs> Gig them. A- a- A&M got an upset the other day, didn't they? A- yeah, and I was surprised. Yeah, I was yeah, watching beat, that the other day. I was like, beat the beat crap out of North Carolina. If, that was a shocker. If they can control the boards, they got three guys who play for them that are 6'10 or taller, mm-hmm. and they're very good at controlling the boards. If they control offensive and defensive rebounding, they've got a shot at beating anyone. Jesse Martinez like says, Howard ends. Everyone dies. Howard the Duck uses the Soul Stone and brings everyone back. Including Leah Thompson in the 1980s. Yes. Bring bring that Leah Thompson back. I'm t- oh, yeah. Oh. I, 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 I can see that. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, goodness. What oh, yeah. Else? <laughs> oh, what else did I miss here? What else did I miss? No, no pressure. The ad game's in 30 minutes. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> Believe me, I'm keeping an eye on that. Oh, my goodness. I believe Cap- John Lugo says, I believe Captain America will die. I don't want him to die, but I think he's the heart and soul of the Avengers. Yes. Mr. Goody Two Shoes, the captain, he thinks he'll be the first to go. No, he nah, won't be the first to go. Th- from that'll, the- be, that'll be at the end of whatever movie. I think that'll be part of the cliffhanger it is, is when Captain America dies. And, you know, the Avengers are just shocked. And probably that's when Thanos will snap his fingers and wipe out half the universe or something like that. So. Yep. All righty. All right. Shall we call it? I think we're good think here. We're good. So uh, we'll go ahead and thank you all for listening. Don't forget, we're going to have giveaways pretty much every week from here on out for the next couple of months. So come back every week to see what you can win. And we will catch you all another time. Later, Couch Potatoes.